You're listening to LV Rocks. Noise from Vegas. The following is a live LV Rocks original webcast. Visit LVRocks.com for studio cam and live chat room. Knowledge is power, and this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. News Hour. My name is Kirk Ducott, your host. Uh, today in the studio, we have Michael McCullough. Hi there. We have uh, Perry Haichu. And a special guest, we have our, our president and founder, Jennifer Solis, is on the show with us today. <laughs> and, and our in-studio guest today is, is Paul Aisley. So. so, Mike, why don't you give a little introduction to Paul? Oh, well, okay. Um, you know, these days... Uh, uh, Tick Siegelblom, our, our good friend and, and state senator, takes a, a, a lot of the limelight in the cannabis reform movement uh, because there's a lot of sunshine there for him in, in Nevada. Um, but while he, people call him the father of medical marijuana uh, in Nevada, Tick always refers to Paul as the grandfather of marijuana in Nevada because in, in 2013, uh, Paul sponsored a bill for legalization of cannabis in the state of Nevada. And, that, yep. and that's pretty forward thinking 2009 2009 wow I'm, I'm behind the times so it was it was it that long ago because i i know we've known each other for, that was my first for time. Time. wow so, so in your first term you came out with cannabis <laughs> Woohoo! right on right on yes no fear whatsoever for what your constituents might have thought or anything like that you were forward enough thinking at that time to know that this was going to be a prolific a prolific uh, item on the agenda eventually well at that time i thought you just did what you thought is right and what the people want yes sir wow what a wow. concept i know <laughs> i know and i was going to say what do you think now <laughs> i'm learning <laughs> definitely good answer sir. in that first term i also did a portable tax credit for the movie industry which failed and yep. i did a non-discrimination against transgenders and failed but they all passed in following years. Right. Yeah. Awesome. I, was, I was just going to say, I'm like, Thank those you all sound very work. familiar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it looks like uh, we're going to pass this year uh, legalization in Nevada, and it's going right. to be the voters who pass it rather than the legislature. Question and, two. Uh, question two. Yeah, there, w there was a shift there. It, it had been question one for a long time, and just in the past few days it got switched around there. So, um, you know, I, we don't know why that happened. But the, the important thing is it's going to be on the ballot again. And, Definitely. Uh, uh, even uh, Sheldon Adelson, who is opposed to this measure, his own polling was, internal polling was released uh, in error a couple of weeks ago, and it shows 60% of Nevad Nevadans support this initiative. So that's well, a good so solid So we thank majority. whoever released that in error. Uh, and we, we, are, we already passed this once in, in the popular vote, and then it went up in the, in, in the legislature, and that's got down there. Mm. No, I think we had ballot. We didn't. We have a ballot. We, uh, we had ballot initiative in two thousand two yeah. and two thousand six, which did not the, pass. Yeah. Um, th what what happened was the the legislature had a shot at this in the last term because enough signatures were gathered to ah, force them the to ballot. either vote on it or punt it to the voters for the next election, and that's what they did. So have we so. heard we heard anything more about them possibly expediting it after if this does pass to where we can actually have this go into law in 2017 instead of waiting until 2018 well um from from what i'm hearing uh tick says that it's going to be one of the earlier bills that gets passed uh previously uh, marijuana bills have been one of the last bills that come through the session but um uh, tick seems to feel that the revenue will be important to the state what do you think about that paul well it's just that because the the uh, petition passes it doesn't mean that the state is ready to uh, implement it because mm -hmm. unless people are forward thinking now and putting everything in place but look how slow it was to get the medical marijuana mm -hmm. actually out in sales so i don't know what they're going to do i haven't heard the the details that are needed for the regular recreational marijuana i don't think that one's going to take 13 years <laughs> no. <laughs> no and especially especially since now that we do have open dispensaries for the medical they can dual purpose them you know what i mean so we already have the supply there and well the demand is there also it just hasn't passed 
<laughs> so, so. Without yeah. a doubt, a demand, the demand is there. And you just look at what's happening in, in Colorado. And, uh, for example, last year, Colorado took in uh, $135 million in taxes on, and fees on just shy of a billion dollars in sale in the combined recreational and medical And with market. all that money, did they did the uh, underage youth increase? No. As a matter of <laughs> fact, there, there was a, a study that uh, came out that was released uh, uh, by the AP, and Colorado children are not smoking more. Uh, among high school students, and they surveyed 40,000 Colorado students, use went from 23% in 2005 to 20% in 2014. So it went down by 3% after legalization because it's not forbidden fruit anymore. I, think I was that, just going to say, do yeah. you really think that's what it's attributed to is now that the, uh, now that the stigma is being taken away that it's not really as cool anymore and it's just kind of like anything else? Well, hopefully well, it, it I mean, does an alcohol use like in, in some parts of Italy and Europe where they really have, they have wine at the table around the children and it's really not a forbidden thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is no age limit over there. But there's, but people just frown on being drunkards that it was more of a social type of, of pressure mm -hmm. or not. Yeah, but there, there are two basic problems with the sale and consumption of marijuana. Sure. One is that the brownies, I'm going to tell you how much is in there. You need to do that. And the second thing, of course, is when are you under the influence? Because it's not the same as alcohol. Mm -hmm. That's and true. Several things are happening. I heard one person called me and said that he's off of his ins wife's insurance because he's been taking marijuana, and they found out. And then the other problems are you lose benefits, workman's comp, if you're found to be positive for marijuana, even though you might not be impaired. So I think there's a real problem in, in that one. And there are also, there are no protections for either medical cannabis patients or presumably if uh, IP2 passes, um, the employers, it's still a right to work state, and the employers don't have to accommodate right. that use, even if it's Well, they don't, I mean, the but clock. the employers don't have to accommodate anything in this mm. state. It's an at-will state. It, it means that no. basically, basically, they don't, it's not just called discrimination. They can just say, you know what, your services aren't needed any longer. So how, how does the legislature then balance the desire of the voters, which are more people, versus the desires of the, um, of the employers uh, on issues like these? Well, let's not reinvent everything. We have examples now in several states. I would investigate to see what's going on. But the problems are there. I haven't heard any great solutions I wouldn't know what to even suggest for legislation to fix what I just mentioned as problems. Mm -hmm. But they're there. I mean, the first sure. thing is to become aware of them. Well, That's the truth. Smoking rates, tobacco smoking rates in this country have gone down 30% in 30 years by education. They weren't locking people up for cigarettes other than those who you know, were doing untaxed, illegal 18-wheelers. Well, so again, it's social pressure, and I guess it's so the, what, what the group think is. If we, if we show, if we shine a light on on what something really is, I think that intelligent people would lead themselves to a solution. I mean, you know, mostly. I mean, people there still be so. criminals, but there. I think that I think that more pressures will you know decrease. Crime. I don't know. Ted Cruz is, by all accounts, an intelligent person. But it doesn't mean that I'd want him, you know, dictating policy on this, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just, you know, well, I'm not going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about how how intelligent I think Ted Cruz is or not. <laughs> um, but let's talk about Pennsylvania, the 24th yes. uh, medical marijuana state. Absolutely, showing some intelligence there. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Okay. Flashes uh, of brilliance. Flashes it's, of brilliance. It but, is a step forward. There are there are definite flaws. Uh, legalization of the 24 state t uh, to legalize a comprehensive uh, public medical marijuana program after Governor uh, Tom Wolf signs legislation on last Sunday. Um, there are major elements of the bill that are concerning to me that um, patients are not going to be allowed to legally grow their own cannabis. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to smoke it. You're going to have it as a pill, an oil, a tincture, a liquid, or a topical form such as a gel, cream, or ointment. There's no vaping and no smoking. Um, the state would license 25 growers and processors and as many as 50 dispensaries. I have really have no problem with that. Uh, and then located within, they're not to be located within 1,000 feet of a school or daycare. I really don't have a problem with either of those things. 
um, and children are allowed to be on the program. So I don't have a problem with that, but kind of not being able to grow your own, not being able to have your own medicine, have your own... Uh, not being able to smoke it is kind of ridiculous. Um, yeah. Besides that, how do I put this? Uh, how was this bill introduced? Was it a ballot initiative? That no, no, this was legislative. So this originated yeah. in the legislature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, I think if so we... So I wonder if any of them have smoked before or well, consumed. Well, statistically, yes. Okay. Yeah. No, no doubt. Statistically, yes. So but, somebody had to see the But they did not in inhale. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, heard I, I don't think anybody would have a problem if, if the law may well say uh, that you can't produce your own tetracycline at home or you can't self-produce insulin uh, that, that you're going to inject into yourself. Cannabis has a kind of unique status because of its medicinal properties and but the closeness of that like, to the they're plant. They're already acting like the State Board of Pharmacies have purview over this drug and they do not. Mm-hmm. They do not. And they cannot because it's Schedule 1 still. And they cannot still. because it's Schedule 1. So quit acting like they have purview over uh, a plant. They don't. Yeah, that's my opinion. So, would that, so, Paul, would that be health or agriculture? <laughs> in, it's called medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. But still, if you go to buy it in Nevada, you don't pay taxes on your medicine, but you pay taxes on marijuana. Sure, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. how do you justify that? We that don't. was a compromise uh, to get the bill passed. I thought they can cherry exactly. pick whatever they want whenever they choose on certain on certain things. You take this out of here and you say, "Oh, this fits my agenda for today and not tomorrow." Well, no, I think yeah, you, <clears throat> I think you're right in that, but I also think that it has to do with how how do you get anything done in in legislature and politics? You you point out where there is money to be made for the state. Or the individual in this, and, and therefore. Well, that's very unfortunate. I mean, that is the sad truth of it. We do have to make these compromises, but to your earlier statement, you're like, well, you know, we would like to think that intelligent people would lead themselves to honest conclusions, and that's just really not the case. Well, there's I guess a lot that's of, kind of a Pollyanna. There's a, yeah, there's a view, lot of smart people. You know, I've met a I lot like of smart people reality. that were very ignorant, <laughs> devious in nature. Not uh. exactly ignorant, but. A purposeful agenda that they seek out, you know, using their intelligence for certain aspects that may or may not have been beneficial or a part of the original legislative intent of the bill, mm -hmm. you know, and it just is what it is. We just have to deal with it, and it's just another thing to correct. And like, you know, uh, Assemblyman Isley here was talking about, Isley? Mm -hmm. Isley. Isley, I'm sorry. You know, there are so many aspects of the medical marijuana bill that need to be fixed from the DUI statutes to the to the gun rights, you know, the concealed weapons permits holders. And, you know, I, I could go, well, we could go on and on, VA benefits and this and that, insurance, uh, the ability to actually hold insurance or have your insurance rates raised because of that as a pre-existing condition because you're addicted to these drugs. I mean, I, we could go on and on and on. We'll, like I said, we'll be in legislature every other year fixing this for 20 years, even if, even if uh, recreational sure. passes. Sure. And then, then you also got to you also got to figure in the the interpretation thing too because we're running into that a lot now where the state interprets the law one way the city interprets it another way mm. you know so and, the people and we have third. New, the people and we have new people coming in all the time so let's say we have this group of assemblymen and state senators and city councilmen we got them nice and educated you know life is good we're starting to make progress well guess what elections happen people term limit out mm -hmm. and here comes the new team and it starts all over again the Here education we yeah, process. It, it well, that's what we can. Again, so. That's kind of what we are about. Was we can is that we we talk to a lot of people um, ab about issues that have to do with cannabis, and so that's what we, where we fulfill our community. Yeah, we'll do our best. That's <laughs> you know, it, the good news is it's becoming legal for the people that need it. It's becoming legal like alcohol for people that want to enjoy it. The states are experimenting, and we will eventually get some good uniform laws. The Pennsylvania stuff to some stuff to me sounds crazy. I think we're doing better here. Colorado's doing great. The science that they're doing on the different kinds of marijuana are just fantastic. I mean, that that's the stuff to follow. What's the, the good part, the bad part, the medical part? It no. takes time. I mean, that the country is designed to move slowly through the legislative process. Mm -hmm. Sure. But at least it started. Yeah. Because the, the, that political change and reform may not be fast enough to suit us, but yeah. if it were going in a direction we didn't like, we'd, we'd like that conservative, middle-of-the-road you know, yeah. approach. Definitely. 
Definitely. So, uh, what else have we got going on here? Well, uh, you know, moving, you know, to speaking about the federal government, uh, a well, key Senate panel voted to increase military veterans' access to med medical cannabis last Thursday, and they said that uh, what they would do is uh, uh, they're – the VA policy currently disallows doctors from recommending medical marijuana in states where it is legal, uh, and uh, that actually expired on January 31st. But under the department's procedures, <coughs> excuse me, the ban technically resumes, re remains in effect until a new policy is placed. So, uh -huh. you know, the Senate is now saying, "All right, you're you're not going to turn people away just because they're testing positive for medical marijuana in these states." And the veterans who have given more for this country than arguably any other group are are among the most deserving of any help that we as a people or as a government can give. Sure. sure. Absolutely. Yes, we, absolutely. We shouldn't be turning anyone away because they choose to use cannabis as as a safe effective medicine. Not only the veterans, you know, that have you've gone through this. We have everyday people that are being turned off of their, their pain medicines because they're using using cannabis to try to alleviate the pain or maybe even get off the pain medicines. But as soon as they're found out, they're being by the pain doctor. Oh, how disappointing! Yeah. Pain doctors are just yanking away, saying, "I can't, I can't help you anymore." Oh, how and disappointing! And then they go through horrible withdrawal. Yeah. Oh. But before they were using cannabis, it was perfectly fine to shell them out as many pills as they wanted. And how hypocritical. Actually not. <laughs> I, think that, I think that there were reforms that, that Senator Tick kind of put in place, uh, uh, you know, to put in place in the last legislative session or the one beforehand where that you couldn't yeah. get your mm -hmm. prescriptions just refilled. You had to go oh, into the doctor every, every 30 month, days. Every month now, yeah. Yeah, because, of the, because this state is just uh, rife with pill addiction. And it's looking and like we need to take our first break right now. Sorry to break. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Off there, That's Jen. Okay. I but we're going to be back with our 420 moment and more and with Assemblyman Paul Aisley. Yep. LV Rocks. Noise from Vegas. Attention, medical marijuana patients. Did you know that your medicine could contain pesticides, heavy metals, and even mold? Are you really sure that you're getting the same potency every single time? Well, the answer to that question is simple. Digipath Labs. Digipath Labs is a state-approved laboratory run by scientists. So look for the Digipath Labs quality seal on your next medicine and on the door of your favorite dispensary. To learn more, go to digipathlabs.com. That's D-I-G-I-P-A-T-H labs.com. Hi, I'm Armin Yemenijan, CEO of Essence Dispensaries, and I'd like to let you know a little bit about our company. As a completely complimentary service, our on-site nurse is here to meet with any patient or non-patient to discuss dosing and best practices. We have three convenient locations. We have one location on Tropicana between Decatur and Jones, which is our west side location. Our Henderson location is on the corner of Sunset and Green Valley Parkway, and we're proud to announce that we have the first and only dispensary on the Las Vegas Strip, on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara. Our prices are the lowest prices in town and the highest quality medicine. Please come and see us at one of our three convenient locations or visit us at EssenceVegas.com. You can also call us at 702-978-7575. Once again, the number is 702-978-7575. Getting Legal offers an informative and simple way for you to get your marijuana card. Why come to Getting Legal to get your marijuana card? We have a 99% approval rating and the lowest price in town. Avoid legal problems. Getting Legal can get you legal fast. Ready for a new start? Come in now and get relief from your chronic conditions affecting your quality of life. Call Getting Legal today at 702-979-9999. That's 702-979-9999. Or visit our website at gettinglegal.com to get your marijuana card today. Originating from Las Vegas, Nevada, you're listening to LV Rocks. Noise from Vegas. <coughs> <coughs> Welcome back to the Nevada <clears throat> Cannabis News Hour on LVRocksRadio.com. Uh, it's uh, time now for our 420 moment where we take a little bit of time to honor honor somebody in this movement who's made some strides for us and, and uh, helped make this movement better. And today we're going to honor Senator Tick Seegerbloom. Oh, well, speaking of Tick Seegerbloom, uh, Tick Seegerbloom is a lawyer and a Democrat in the Clark County Assembly District Number 9. He's currently a state Senate uh, senator in District 3. He was born in 1948 in Boulder City, Nevada, and educated at Boulder City High School. Um, and he 
he, he received his uh, doctorate in jurisprudence, I guess, in at University of De, uh, Denver. Uh, he's married to Sharon, and his children are Mary Claire, Eva, and Carl. His legislative service includes uh, Nevada Assembly 2007 and first elected November 2006. Um, personal and professional achie achievements. He's a third generation Nevadan. He's the most valuable player in Nevada State AA football, 65, most valuable athlete in Boulder City High School. Well, you know, he was an athlete. Let's skip all of this. I guess. <laughs> Exactly. But, but more importantly, Holy he, he is single been season rushing record. Happened. Are you kidding me? Yeah, single <laughs> season rushing record. You know, eight, Eighty-eight to ninety. The state chair, of Nevada Democratic Party, nineteen ninety to nineteen uh, ninety-four. ACLU Civil Libertarian of the Year, nineteen ninety-two. Member of uh, Las Vegas Planning Commission. <laughs> stayed busy. Yeah, he stayed busy, man. Uh, and he's also a friend of ours that we uh, here at We Can, um, and we're honoring Tick Seagram. Do you have some more words? Well, no. Well, well, also, you know, they just came out with the the Seeger Bloom Haze uh, from <laughs> Deep Roots Harvest. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> and you can only get that at Euphoria Wellness. So, uh, yeah. So if you if you're interested, they have that down at Euphoria Wellness. It's 27 percent THC. And it's appropriate that we're honoring Tick on this our broadcast closest to 420 because uh, he has really been a tireless advocate uh, in this area uh, for for many years. I, I first met him uh, in the 2009 session uh, when he was still on the assembly side, and he has he has never wavered in this support. And uh, we really uh, we really appreciate him because without people like Tick or Paul Aisley sitting with us here, uh, we wouldn't have gotten these bills passed. And and it w it, patients would still not have the kind of access that they need. And, you know, I think one of the most important things in working with legislature is the ability to, to give and take. You, you need, as, as advocates, we go out there and we have our own agenda that we want fulfilled, but you need to realize also what is able to be fulfilled by the people that are uh, in, in our legislature. Mm -hmm. Well, and the first time you go to serve in the legislature, even if you have the best of intentions, you don't know what to do, and you don't know how to do it. So Tick was a perfect role model. He wasn't a hands-on mentor for me, but he was there, and we agreed on many things, and I watched the way he worked, and it was very good experience for me. Wow. And I appreciate the stuff that Tick has done. As do we all. So our 420 honoree uh, today, uh, Senator Tick Siegelblom, go, go spark one up for us. <laughs> Definitely. Next time Adam, I'm at his house, I will. <laughs> so let, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit more about the assembly, Paul. Um, you know, you obviously, we as we mentioned, you you introduced a, a legalization bill back in 2009, and and you know, everyone said that it had no chance, and it, it really didn't. And you know, you're saying that you you were doing this because it is the right thing to do. Is that enough in politics? Well, it doesn't matter if it's enough. If you see the video of a young girl having repeated episodes of con what is it, convulsions, convulsions yeah. and, and nothing can seem to stop it, and she has many in one day, and then you see that she takes this mar marijuana, and they stop. Uh, why would you say, don't do that? Mm -hmm. and you, you maybe need to do some more investigating, and, but I'm a, a very observant kind of person this works, let's do it. I mean, exactly. <laughs> Cause and effect. Well, <laughs> well, what, what do you, well, Paul, what do you think the, the objections were from, from the other side, not the other side of the aisle necessarily, but the, the other side of the argument? Well, look, I've, you haven't asked what I am. I'm a mathematician, and I believe in definition theorem proof. That's the uh. way we think. Mathematicians are kind of uniform in the way they behave. If I prove something in America, it's true in Australia. Mm -hmm. In it's politics, true. if you tr say something today, your neighbor will say the opposite. So you've got to talk, mm -hmm. but you can't prove. You have to get consensus. You have to talk to people. And there was a big objection to taking marijuana. It has a lot of negative stigma. A stigma or ra rightly or wrongly, it's rightly there. Or yeah. Wrongly, yeah, it's there. Yeah. People are using it. People are in jail. They're taking a. It's costing us money. They really haven't done anything wrong. Didn't we learn anything from prohibition? 
Well, apparently not. No, because we just went and made some prohibited something else. Well, you know, and you're talking more people in jail, and I know that you and I have spoken uh, about that issue as well, because the U.S. is currently second in the world per capita in incarceration behind the Seychelles Islands and the Indian Ocean, and we're and neck China. and neck with North Korea. No, but we're ahead of we, China. We are ahead of China by a factor of five. Wow. China has about 168 people per 100,000 in, incarcerated. We have 698. Don't per they execute 000. a lot more than we do? Well, though? yes, they do. But well, there is that. <laughs> there, there, there is that. But, um, you know, and, and the thing is, I, I checked on statistics this morning, and at the, the U.S. rate of incarceration, Nevada actually incarcerates people at 3% over the average. Of, of the United States. So I've got to ask you, Paul, are, are Nevadans just inherently more evil? Do we need to lock more of them <laughs> up or something? I don't know which is worse, the group that are evil or the group that think they're evil. <laughs> but the, the, the fact is that it's going to cost you twenty-five to $30,000 a year to keep somebody in jail for puffing marijuana. That makes no sense. All we give is 5000 to $7,000 a year to put a kid to school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, look how we can improve the schools with that money that we're spending on people in jail. You know what my, frif, uh, my friend Jeff calls uh, the, the children that are turned out through public school system in Nevada? What? The fitties. The Because we're, we're the 50th in the oh, nation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's a, that's like a slang term, fitty. Yeah, and, and, and it's so true. We, we're not spending money on education in this state, and... Uh, we reap those harvests. That's in part uh, why we don't have good I, medical I care. I don't like to go negative on the school system because mm -hmm. we have some great teachers. We yes. do. And I with, know a lot a of teachers. a little bit of funding, they do an amazing amount of good they work. Do. Yes. They do. Well, they do, actually. I, I'm fully supportive of our teachers yeah. here in Nevada. Um, I just think that we need to get more money to them and to our school well, systems. Yeah, and I, definitely. I, think, I think they're spread a little thin. I think the fact that they have so many children in each classroom, you can't, you know, you can't expect them to do work wonders with everyone. Well, know. speaking of education, you know when cannabis first became illegal across the planet? Not I just do. the United States, <laughs> but across the planet? Mm -hmm. That was March 31st, 1961, then the, when the single convention on narcotic drugs was signed in the UN building in New York. I didn't Wonderful. know that. I didn't know <laughs> that. The reason I'm bringing this up is actually we have a UN convention coming up, don't we? Starting today, as a matter of fact, the United States, uh, the United Nations General Assembly uh, is holding a special st session on uh, on just looking at the drug war in general. And this was something that was not even supposed to happen uh, until 2020. Uh, but uh, several governments, including Mexico, uh, requested this change, this this moving up of the scheduling a couple of years ago, and they're taking a look. At, at these uh, at these policies, because worldwide they're they're causing uh, catastrophe. They're causing unstable governments. Mer you know, you look at what's happening south of the border in Mexico here. Uh, the narcotraficantes that are that are taking over large swaths of of, um, of areas there. Uh, it's it's something that has to be changed. And meanwhile, the in, UN in is the, what, the in place Paraguay to and Uruguay start that. We have the, you know, the exact opposite. And of, of Uruguay was the first country to completely, uh, to completely decriminalize yeah. cannabis. Yeah. And so Canada has been growing hemp right along. We yeah. can't grow hemp. Hemp is a great product for Nevada agriculture and we can't grow it. Yeah, and I was going to say that's when when we order our 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 hemp seeds for the stuff we eat, it, they all come from Canada, Canada, China, mm -hmm. wherever. That's but right. yes, you know, almost all the the hemp seed that we use in this country, it's imported. Well, the the UN convention relied on inputs from from Harry Anslinger just basically to make cannabis illegal. And Harry Anslinger has been dead for fifty years. Exactly, yeah. but this term, you know, what it was termed, cannabigotry. <laughs> Is that like a new one for the dictionary? Oh, okay, that, that, that's a new one. We'll, we'll have to we'll have to turn that to our own use. So, um, what else is going on with the UN but, convention? You know, but in in talking about. It, well, the UN Convention in general, because we're we're talking about um, the incarceration rates, and uh, in many many countries they are just unbelievably high, and 
this is something that is going to need to be changed. You've got Russia, however, taking a very hard line on this, that they don't want to do any sort of liberalization or reform in this area, and so they're going to they're going to throw up roadblocks in this. So it's just for people who are interested. Meanwhile, in that, Russians die of vodka alcohol poisoning on a daily basis. Absolutely. And that, absolutely. When they try to jack up the taxes and stop them from buying it, people were dying from making it in their bathtubs by the thousands, so they had to repeal the law almost immediately. It's so, ridiculous. Let, let me ask you, you know, we're talking about criminal justice, Paul. Um, personally, I've always believed that the, the duty for incarceration and rehabilitation falls on the people, on the, on the state. And, you know, uh, however we see the development of a private for-profit prison industry here in, uh, in Nevada, I know uh, CCA, Corrections Corporation of America, has that prison out in Pahrump. Um, Brought uh, lots of jobs out there, they say. And, and, and that's the thing. Uh, how, how much um, influence did these lobbyists for the, for the prison groups have I in Carson City? It's not a topic I have a lot of experience mm -hmm. with. I think the women's prison out on Smiley Road, mm -hmm. I think that's gone. They, were, they did not succeed as a private prison. I think it had to be revert back to the, to the uh, whichever county or legis whichever legal group had that. I think it's given back to them. And I've, I've done some work in prisons. I taught at the Gene Prison for a while. And the problem, there's a million problems. I mean, I, I don't think I can come up with solutions to problems, but I don't want to give up on people because they're in prison. And I try. I would work so that they get out and they can have a life when they come back. And there's some programs like that here in, in Las Vegas. Uh, I've forgotten names, but there is someone that is hiring people that are out of prison. But it would be nice if the prisons would tra train them, but that's expensive. Uh, I know that when you work in a prison, I know I've had some experience with a kid in prison, that they earn money, but before they're released, they take the money away from them for room and board. Mm -hmm. So they're getting a minimal salary, and it's not... What but it's not really a salary. Yeah, when it's you kind let of someone an loose, you let a 30-year-old person come out of jail with $20 in their pocket, what are they going to do? They're going to go back they, to what, what they, they know. know. What they know. Yeah. And what they know is what they learned in jail. So it's a, it's a crazy system. There is a, uh, there is a movement that's, that's going around the country uh, uh, to, um, to make a, a reform and help re-enter these people in society. And it's called ban the box because on any employment uh, form that you have, you generally, uh, there's a check mark or a check box for you to say whether you've been arrested or convicted of a crime. And so there's legislative movement to, to take that, uh, the ability of employers to do that away so that uh, people who have paid their debt to society can reintegrate and can have a better ch chance because certainly people who have been through the criminal justice system have a much harder time getting a job. Definitely, but I mean, couldn't they, I mean, if, if you're as an employer, or I've, every job I've ever had, I've had a background check. Right. Uh, and I think it's maybe because of due to what I do for a living, but aren't, aren't there background checks in normal jobs, are there? No, not most normal jobs. I mean, in the in the cannabis industry, a lot of them do perform background checks. But you know, just your normal jobs, you know, out there, that's not a normal, not a normal thing. I, it's the invasion I didn't of start privacy getting background checks and FBI checked until about seven years ago, and then, then it's like now it seems like I'm in there every six months or uh, less. So. <laughs> I know, right? I don't like the employer doing background checks on people. I don't like the employers doing checks on what I do in the privacy of my own home. I think that we should re you know, we can talk about re-legislating what happens to criminals, but what about former, former supposed criminals even, but what about people who jump through extra hoops to be patients who are now suffering and not being able to work because of the medicine they take? You know, there are so many, you know, problems with so many pieces of legislation, like, you know, how do you prioritize one over the other? How do you decide what gets the attention and what really dictates worthy because our legislative session is so short and it's only biannual we don't get a crack at it every year so if we miss it hell well you know two years go by and elections happen and there you go and it's so. interesting to hear that from you perry because i know you're kind of a small government guy and, and i would think you generally oh, would support sure. limited legislatures oh, to do of less course. harm of course but you know realistically <laughs> 
you know, we have no choice but to move to, I, I think we have no choice but to move to an annual legislature eventually. It's just, it's just, there's just too much to do. Our Are state is getting that, bigger. I mean, every time eventually. I go up there, the people about the, I mean, not about today, the, not tomorrow, but someday. After about a month, everybody looks like they have black circles under their eyes. Well, that's because you're you know. trying to cram two years of stuff into three, how, how many days is the session? 120. 120 days and usually a thousand or more bills. How how can you possibly even instruct staff that you trust if you are not even, I think you're issued staff. Can you select your staff or does the Legislative Council Bureau just issue it to you? No, the topic would go to the LCB person that's, that knows that subject. They're assigned subjects. How can, can you, like, out. if you were interested in a specific bill, let's say you wanted to take the time to read 10% of those 1,000 bills that comes through. So you want to read 100 bills in 120 days. How could you even possibly instruct your staff to really honestly pour well, over everything you, to you a, don't, a pro it, it's, it's almost impossible, isn't it? You're probably it? not going to see all 1,000 bills anyway. They're going to come to you slowly. They come to you from different sources. Some of them you know are not going to pass, and you just kind of ignore those. But if you th I'll tell you, the, the one guy that I know that really read every bill before he signed it was Harry Mortensen, the late Harry Mortensen. And another one to watch, an older guy, and you learn from watching what the older guys do. But uh, I've not been able to read every bill. I find, I, I find the ones that are of interest to me. I certainly look at the bills that come out of the ideas that I suggest. And sometimes, I mean, one reason why the original marijuana bill didn't get any further, I didn't do enough. I just uh, didn't have enough background. Tick did a great job in knowing what else has to accompany the bill. And that's what we don't know in the initiative. We don't yes, know sir. what else has to happen besides just the initiative passing. So, it, and I would say, in general, there has never been a perfect bill written. You right. don't know. Yeah. And if you do it in 120 days, I'm pretty sure that you're not going to get a perfect bill. Or but you copied it from some other well, state. Sir, but isn't, <laughs> isn't that the system here? Isn't that what the judges, the judiciary is for? I mean, they look at the intent of the bill. and Interpret. I hope they don't look at the exact wording of the bill but more of the intent of the bill when they make a decision. On well, whether it's yeah. constitutional Well, or with all that well, experience and knowledge, yeah. do you think it would be worth the state to spend the money to have more time for you guys to do your work, or are we okay where we are? What you're doing now with, a, with 120 days, you're allowing a lot of people to participate. I'm thinking of the teachers, both UNLV and the Clark County School District, they can take off a half a year. I don't think they can take off two years and keep their job. <laughs> right. The other side of that is we don't pay people a living wage to be a legislator. So you are deciding who is going to be a legislator by these kind of rules. People who can afford to be a legislator. Right. I can be a legislator because I'm retired. I don't have a job to worry about. But when someone, say, Jack Virgil's Dean of Titus, when they went into the legislature, Someone had to pay all their benefits. They had to pay their benefits themselves. They were gone from the campus. And so you... Oh, wow. And then what do you earn? Well, we, got, we get per diem and we get paid for 60 of the 120 days. So there's wow. no salary for the second half. Mm -hmm. And people aren't talking about what they're going to do with a longer session. So and you're telling me that every single legislature takes a loss by being a legislator, so it's more charity work. So it's a service, a public it, service. It depends who you're working for. If you're working for a state or government agency, there'll be rules. If you're working in the private sector, your boss can be as generous as he wants to be. Okay. Or she can be. Hmm. So do you think that uh, Nevada would be well served by moving to either a longer legislative session or, or every year at this point? Well, there, there are other models. I believe the, the Texas model is every Every other year, they do only the budget, which makes sense. The way things go, first they're boom, and then they're bust, and you have a budget that you wrote two years ago, you're probably not going to get it to be a working budget. There's going to be problems with it. At least an annual review of the budget would make some sense. Now, if you can get over the opposition of people that don't like government, and, as l and less is better, which I always have this problem, I mean, it's a seven billion dollar industry, and you don't want anybody experienced to run it. It just doesn't yeah. make sense to me. You know, term limits, get rid of the incumbents, all of that makes no sense. Well, I mean, I can. It's easy to say let's get rid of the incumbents when when you're looking at the other side, but when when the people <laughs> on your side, you want to keep that wisdom and experience. Right. You know. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of people who aren't big fans of term limits. They believe it creates you know career politicians and and this that and the other. 
and there are all these bad things about being, you know, in service for that long. I think maybe it's because people just don't fully understand it. Like, what would you say to people that have that kind of skewed view of uh, of long term legislator? Uh, Why a long-term do they vote for these people? That's exactly. It. That's it. Use your vote. They must be doing something right if you keep them in. You well, go. you know, I mean, Las Vegas is known for name recognition. And with oh, that, everywhere, <laughs> pedigree is everything. And, and I think with yeah, that, we're going to go on a break. Yeah, we're going to go on a break here in just oh. a little bit. Make sure you check out our sponsors, uh, Nevada Pure, Sahara Wellness, Essence Vegas, Digipath Labs, and Getting Legal. And we'll be right back with some more news. LV Rocks, noise from Vegas. Attention medical marijuana patients. Do you know what your cannabis actually contains? Are there heavy metals, pesticides, or even mold? And what strength is it really? And is it really what you need? Well, the answers to these questions are simple. Digipath Labs. Digipath Labs is a Nevada state approved medical marijuana testing facility whose scientists carefully test products for safety and potency all within the state's rigorous mandate. You can buy with confidence and trust knowing Digipath Labs has tested your medicine. If you're a licensed grower, dispenser, extractor, or edibles manufacturer in Nevada and want unparalleled customer service and consumer confidence, go to digipathlabs.com and find out what we can do for you. And as a patient, only go to dispensaries that carry the Digipath Labs seal of approval. That's digipathlabs.com, D-I-G-I-P-A-T-H labs.com. Or call us at 702-209-2429. That's 702-209-2429. Hi, I'm Armin Yemenijin, CEO of Essence Dispensaries, and I'd like to let you know a little bit about our company. As a completely complimentary service, our on-site nurse is here to meet with any patient or non-patient to discuss dosing and best practices. We have three convenient locations. We have one location on Tropicana between Decatur and Jones, which is our west side location. Our Henderson location is on the corner of Sunset and Green Valley Parkway, and we're proud to announce that we have the first and only dispensary on the Las Vegas Strip, on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara. Our prices are the low prices in town and the highest quality medicine please come and see us at one of our three convenient locations or visit us at essencevegas.com you can also call us at 702-978-7575 once again the number is 702-978-7575 Getting Legal offers an informative and simple way for you to get your marijuana card. Why come to Getting Legal to get your marijuana card? We have a 99% approval rating and the lowest price in town. Avoid legal problems. Getting Legal can get you legal fast. Ready for a new start? Come in now and get relief from your chronic conditions affecting your quality of life. Call Getting Legal today at 702-979-9999. That's 702-979-9999. Or visit our website at gettinglegal.com to get your marijuana card today. Originating from Las Vegas, Nevada, you're listening to LV Rocks, noise from Vegas. Welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour on LV Rocks Radio. So uh, today we have uh, Paul Aisley in the house with us and our regular crew and our special guest, President and founder Jennifer Solis with and us. And remember, uh, if you want to call in here at Vegas Rocks yep, Radio, it, it, the phone number is 702 479 5254. That's right. So All if you right, have any guys. Call it in. As the special guest, I want to do a report on our party. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I, I'm finally feeling normal. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, we had we had how many booths there? Like six. Seven, eight, 23 booths? people signed up to come. We had a couple people that didn't show, but there was quite a few. Booths. The thing with that property is it, it, it was almost three acres. So with the with the number of people were there, there was almost 500 people there. It still looked empty. Yeah, they, and they because they come and go out. because the party lasted many hours. Yeah, yeah, definitely the party party asked, lasted many many hours and. Um, Many dispensaries and many uh, different dispensary workers purchased medicine at their own dispensary to to hand out to other patients, which is legal. And that was, um, cool. that was really cool of all of the dispensary workers. I'm happy that they came out. Um, and and it just made it a great event. I was the recipient personally of a couple of blessings from a couple of different vendors that were more than willing to donate to me since I had the green wristband on. Yes. And that made the enjo- experience much more enjoyable to just kind of have the random act just kind of blown of upon kindness. me. Yeah, Definitely. it was very... Yep, as you're walking around, people are just handing you, handing you free meds. I mean, 
Big shout out to Deep Roots. Uh, they, I got some of their grape stomper that was at 36%.